Well, may I seize this opportunity to wish you a happy and joy-filled Easter. Rest assured, uh, before the morning's out, there'll be plenty of opportunity for us to worship Jesus together. But as we celebrate Jesus bursting out of the tomb and appearing in person to his followers, as we remind ourselves of the glory of the resurrection of Jesus beating death of the hope of life to come, it kind of feels appropriate to just take a few moments to share something of where we see things heading for us as a church over the next few months. I mean, the last year has felt a lot like dying for so many of us, hasn't it? In a very literal sense, a number of us, we've lost family members, friends, neighbours, work colleagues through this time. Also, because all of us seen the death of so many things that we've held dear. And so, this last week, it's felt like a much needed injection of hope, hasn't it? As we've finally been able to meet up with others outside. And let's be honest, a little bit of sunshine after the darkness of winter. Well, that's certainly helped too. But I guess, probably... We're still all pretty focused on that wonderful day to come towards the end of June, where if all steps in the government's guidelines are met, we might see our nation finally unlock and life return more fully to some form of normality. Now, before providing our own Church Central South version of Boris's roadmap, Very quickly, let me share four guiding principles that very much undergird everything I'm going to say. Number one, in all of this, we need to hold all of our plans lightly. If the last year has taught us anything, surely it's that things can change and that often these changes are very much outside of our control. And so, although we have a plan that does take us back towards meeting together in person, I think we still need to be prepared for unforeseen twists and turns along the way. You know, for the record, I am so intensely proud of the way this church has adapted over the last year. But what I'm asking is that we keep being a flexible church. We do need to hold all plans lightly. Secondly, we also do want to keep following all of the government guidelines, both the letter of them and also the spirit of them. As Paul points out in 1 Corinthians, what's permissible and what's beneficial are not always the same. And so I don't ask you to keep looking to honour the guidelines for the greater good of our city, even though it might mean further sacrifices as time goes on. Thirdly, we also recognise not everyone will be able to move at the same pace. Now, for the sake of authenticity, I've never done this, but I'm imagining this to be a bit like the Couch to 5K challenge. Some people, admittedly, are already crouched on the starting line, ready to sprint off the moment that starting pistol fires. But most of us are so used to sitting on our sofa on a Sunday morning, it's going to take a great deal of effort to start running again. I know personally, I'm desperate to see you all. But at the same time, I also actually quite like being able to switch on the TV from the comfort of my lounge without having to go anywhere or change out my joggers. I'm also, if truth be told... I don't know us of being in a room full of people again, having spent the last year desperately trying to avoid crowded spaces. And then to compound matters, some have been vaccinated, others are still waiting. And so we're all likely to need a bit of time to ease our way back in. And just to reassure you, we remain committed to providing online content every Sunday. And certainly we won't be neglecting that as we start to move back to meeting in person again. We want to keep serving everyone as best we can during this whole transition period. And then, just so you know, looking further into the future, currently we're we're just thinking through what kind of hybrid online meeting we might continue to offer uh, after all of this is done. However, that being said, although we're all going to be moving at 
a different pace, I would urge you all to start moving, to leave the couch, to start taking some intentional steps, because the end goal for everyone is being together in person. And the fourth guiding principle, I want to urge you to be kind. As I've alluded to already, we're all in different positions here. Some have breezed through lockdown and are raring to go. Others have struggled with health, their mental health, their physical health, bereavement perhaps, work being more demanding than ever before, money challenges, family, working from home, homeschooling. We've all got a story to tell and it's different for each of us. My appeal would be that we don't judge others, that we avoid being critical and instead that we believe the best, that we're generous spirited, that we show kindness at every opportunity. And so, all that being said, here is the plan as it stands. From Sunday the 18th of April, we are going to launch in-person meetings at Central House at, get this, the slightly earlier time of 10 a.m. Why earlier? I hear you cry. Well, at this point, we're still not allowed to mingle with one another. So we do want to give the opportunity for people to return home in time to join with the online coffee time if they want to. Also, the early time will enable us to clean and sanitize the whole building ahead of the launch of our East Site meetings at 11.45 a.m. Now, sadly, it's not going to be room for everyone in Central House right now. So there's going to be an online booking system each week to enable people to secure their space. We'll provide a bit more detail about how it's going to work and some of the things to expect next Sunday. But just so you know, we aim to watch the online meeting together on the screen with at least one live element each time, whether that's worship or preaching or praying or a ministry time. Uh, there'll also uh, be a separate kids work for three to 11 year olds in the 10 a.m. meeting. Now the plan is to keep meeting like this at Central House for five weeks, at which point government guidelines permitting from Sunday the 23rd of May will then encourage people to meet in homes with another household or up to six people to watch the online meeting together each week. Could be we continue with our central house meetings at that point but we'll make that decision closer to the time and then government guidelines and venue permitting from sunday the 27th of june we hope to be able to meet all together in the same venue needless to say king edwards they've got quite a lot on their plate right now. And so it's perhaps no great surprise that thus far, despite our regular attempts to communicate, they haven't been able to provide any clear idea as to when, how, or for that matter, if we'll be able to return. But as and when we know anything more, we'll certainly keep you posted. Now look, I'm aware perhaps all of this raises more questions than answers. It's frustrating, I know, but Ultimately, we just don't know what's ahead. But we do know that through all of this, our best and only hope is Jesus. Although there is so much that remains outside of our control, we can choose to dig deeper into our relationship with him. That much is in our control. Later on. Rich is going to be launching us into 40 days, our time of drawing nearer to Jesus. And I want to encourage you, as strongly as I can, to seize hold of this opportunity to press into Jesus like never before. If you keep listening this morning, you're going to be hearing a whole range of really practical ways aimed at helping you so that whatever else happens this time will not be wasted. 